nice to see you again. This lesson is really going to move your German skills forward because many of the most important German verbs are actually irregular. And I am now going to show you how irregular verbs are conjugated. And afterwards we will learn how to actually use those verbs in some open-ended questions or so-called W questions. Grab your paper and pen and let's start. Okay, we want to identify what people are doing in these scenes. What verb describes her activity best? Right, she's reading. The German word for to read is lesen. Lesen. We will learn how to conjugate that in a minute. What is this person doing? She's sleeping. In German, schlafen. Schlafen. Which verb describes her activity? Right, to see or to watch. On German, sehen. Sehen. You do not pronounce the H, do you notice? Sehen. And what's she doing now? She's driving. To drive in German is fahren. Fahren. In total, I have seven new words for you today, all of which are irregular. So these are sehen, lesen, schlafen, fahren, and also geben, nehmen, und wissen. All really important verbs, aren't they? Okay, so now let's learn how to actually conjugate them. You are already acquainted with the personal pronouns on the left side. You see the infinitive of each verb here on the right and the conjugations right underneath them. So let's recap what actually differentiates a regular verb from an irregular verb. Regular verbs are verbs that do not change their verb stem throughout their conjugated forms. So after eliminating en from the infinitive, the stem receives the endings for the first, second and third person singular and plural. And that's it for regular verbs. Now, irregular verbs are verbs whose stems actually do change during conjugation. However, usually not for all forms. Let's look at them in detail. Sehen, to see or to watch, has the verb stem see, but you can see that the stem changes to sie for the second and third person singular. So, ich sehe, du siehst, er sie es sieht, wir sehen, ihr seht, sie sehen. So the irregularity is in the stem of the du and er sie es forms. Next one, lesen to read. Same picture here. Ich lese, du liest. The change to IE here. Er sie es liest. Wir lesen. Ihr lest. Sie lesen. Fahren. To drive. Ich fahre. Du fährst. Er fährt. Here we have a change from A to the umlaut Ä. Wir fahren, ihr fahrt, sie fahren. Plural forms are always regular here. Geben, to give. Ich gebe, du gibst, er gibt, wir geben, ihr gebt, sie geben. Gebe changes to keep here in the verb stem. Nehmen to take. Ich nehme, du nimmst. Er sie es nimmt. Wir nehmen, ihr nehmt, sie nehmen. Nehm changes to nimm here in the singular. And lastly, wissen, to know. Ich weiß, du weißt, er weiß, 
this is totally irregular here, even in the conjugation endings, wir wissen, ihr wisst, sie wissen. So far, so irregular, so good. Now, how can we use this? Let's apply our new conjugation skills by learning to formulate open-ended questions that contain these verbs. So let me quickly show you how open-ended questions are formed. You already know how to ask a closed-ended question or yes-no question. All you have to do is invert subject and verb and add a question mark to the end. For open-ended questions, we need a so-called interrogative pronoun or question word, also called the W questions – when, why, who, where, etc. In German, these question words are was – for what, wer – for who, wann – for when, wo – for where, woher – for from where, wohin for to where, wie for how, and warum for why. Adding some example sentences to illustrate this, we can say, Was ist das? What is that? Wer bist du? Who are you? Wann kommst du? When will you come? Wo wohnen Sie? Where do you live? Woher kommen Sie? Where do you come from? Wohin gehen Sie? Where are you going? Wie heißen Sie? What's your name? And warum lernst du Deutsch? Why are you studying German? Was? Wer, wann, wo, woher, wohin, wie und warum. To use it in a question, you do the same as for yes-no questions. You invert subject and verb and then you put the question word right in the beginning of the sentence. Was ist das? Easy, right? Now it's finally time to practice what we learned. Let's return to our scenarios from the beginning of the lesson. But this time, we will be able to say and ask much more about them. As usual, I will do one example, then it's your turn. Pause the video whenever you need some more time to think. Wer ist das? Das ist Mona. Was macht sie? Sie liest. Was liest sie? Sie liest ein Buch. Wo liest sie ein Buch? Zu Hause. Now you. Wer ist das? Das ist Tina. Wo ist Tina? Sie ist zu Hause. Im Schlafzimmer. Was macht Tina? Sie schläft. Warum schläft sie? Sie ist müde. Wo ist Sarah jetzt? Sie ist jetzt in der Stadt. Was macht sie? Sie fährt Auto. Wohin fährt sie? Sie fährt in den Supermarkt. 
Good job, everybody. Would you like to know how you can describe people and their personality to someone? Then make sure to watch our next lesson also. I'll see you there.